Okay, so I now want to move on to my larger purchases uh, for my birthday. As you can see, they're sitting over here. And I guess I will just start with Van Cleef and then we'll move on to Chanel. But this year from Van Cleef, I did get two pieces. They're both necklaces. Um, definitely leave down in the comments below what you think they might be. One of them is in the vintage size, one of them is in the small size or the sweet size. But the first one that I'll show you, um, I actually got this one for myself. So, opening it up here. It did still come in the classic packaging with the hard box. There are some places that have moved strictly only to soft packaging, so it just like comes in a kind of travel case, but my store still did give me the hard case as well as the travel case. So I was happy about that, but this is the sweet rose gold hammered necklace. So, so cute. So my first Van Cleef piece was actually my bracelet here. So it's the same bracelet. It is the sweet size rose gold hammered um, one motif uh, bracelet. And so I definitely did want to get this necklace piece to match as well, but I was a little on the fence because I had also recently purchased the uh, sweet sized necklace in just the gold classic white mother of pearl and I had the matching mother of pearl sweet earrings as well so I was like uh, I just got a sweet necklace don't know if I want to get this one as well uh, but definitely this piece goes way better with the rest of my jewelry because it is rose gold and I do feel that it's much more of a daily kind of necklace because like I said I think that rose gold complements my skin tone very well and it's definitely kind of like less bright and less easy to see when you're just wearing it as a daily piece and additionally i knew that i was going to get it eventually and they happen to have it in stock sometimes they don't have it in stock especially these rose gold or hammered pieces so when it was in stock when i went to go pick up my other gift i was like ah i love it too much i know that i'm gonna get excellent wear out of this i might as well just get it now and so i did I'll include a couple more close-ups, but I think that this actually might be my favorite uh, piece of jewelry in my collection just because I wear it so often and it's just um, so like easy, carefree, um, and the hammer detailing makes it kind of like shimmer almost, um, even though it has no stones. I will mention one thing. I'll include a bit of a close-up, but I wear my rose gold hammered sweet bracelet every day. I never take it off. I wear it like when I'm exercising, when I'm showering, whatever, whatever I'm doing, it's always on. Um, and there is color change basically when you do that because obviously rose gold is kind of like a mixture of metals. So it is prone to a little bit of color change. It's not so much that you could tell. You can only really tell that there is color change if you hold up like a brand new rose gold VCA piece next to it. But it does change into a slightly more orange color than pink. So my necklace right now, because it's so new, it's a beautiful, beautiful pink gold. My bracelet is definitely more of like a, a little bit on the orange side, but with pink hues. Um, but I actually really don't mind that because I wear a lot of Cartier rose gold pieces as well and they are definitely more of a like orangish pink color I would say for Cartier. They're definitely not as pink as VCA which is also a bit of a I think challenge when you're buying like rose gold pieces from a lot of various different luxury brands. The rose gold coloring is not the same between different brands that you're buying rose gold pieces from. So I actually like that this did have a little bit of a color change to a little bit of a, a more of an orange hue because it does actually match my Cartier pieces a lot more. I can wear, um, include like a close up of me wearing my sweet bracelet with like my love bangle to kind of show you that there is like a little bit more of a, of a color match after time has passed. But once again, this is the rose gold hammered sweet necklace. I think this is a really, really good entry piece to anybody thinking about investing in their first Van Cleef piece. Of course, the most classic is the gold with the white mother of pearl detailing. But in terms of just like wear, getting just an all gold or all white gold piece definitely is just a little bit easier because with the pearl, you have to be careful with water. You have to definitely make sure you to take it off. Um, when you're doing various activities in your life, but if it's gold, you can definitely wear it with anything. And you know, there might be a little bit of color change, but it's really not noticeable. And if you are buying something this expensive, I do think that you should be able to wear it every day. You shouldn't have to worry about it. So I would really recommend um, one of the hammered pieces uh, as a first piece in your VCA collection. This rose gold hammered sweet necklace was 
$1,620 pre-tax, post-tax it was $1,759.73. So of course it is a very pricey piece, but if you are going to wear it every day, I think it is well worth the investment. So in addition, um, each of the pieces comes with a little booklet and kind of folds out. Um, it has your certificate of authenticity. It has a little like care booklet. Um, so always make sure to keep onto these because they are obviously fine jewelry. And then they also come with different pouches. So um, this is a little large, but you know, you could, it has a little spot for two pieces. Um, great for necklaces. And then they also, I just asked for this one um, because I actually prefer storing my necklaces um, on this, but this is typically for their jewelry, uh, for their bracelets. So you kind of put the ends of the bracelet here. Typically the five motif fits perfectly in here, but it's also great for storing like, I think up to like four necklaces can be stored here like this. And it's really nice because they never get tangled if they're kept in the straight line. So if possible, definitely ask your essay, even if you're buying a necklace for one of these bracelet pouches, because I think they're a little bit better for travel than this which you know, whenever I use something like this, I kind of have to be careful with all my pieces of jewelry tangling amongst themselves. So that is my first piece. And my second one was a gift from my boyfriend. I had really wanted this piece for a while. And it is their yellow gold vintage guilloche pendant. The shine on this is just absolutely incredible. I actually personally prefer jewelry that's cut like this so um, there's like etched detailing into it because it's just like it makes it a little bit more neutral and muted where it, but it still sparkles as much as if there were jewels on it. Um, and I think that it's just a little bit easier in terms of care because, you know, when you're setting stones and you're putting prongs and things like that and you're wearing it as a necklace, uh, debris can get caught up in it and other things like that. The care is just a little bit more involved. So having something like this is just absolutely stunning and beautiful and the maintenance is a little less. Oh, I can't. Sometimes I'll just like open this and just stare at it and like shimmer it around because I'm just so in love with this piece. So the guilloche comes in two colorways. It comes in the gold and it comes in the white gold as well now um, since last year. I'm really, really hoping they come out with a rose gold version of this. You can special order these if you have enough spend history at Van Cleef. I do not have enough spend history at Van Cleef to do such but they did just come out in their uh, newest collection at BCA, um, a relaunch of their rose gold and carnelian five motif bracelet, as well as like 20 motif necklace. Um, and I do definitely want to go check it out because I think it is so beautiful. I'll include a little picture of what that new collection looks like, but I will put it on. But if you can just see how much it shines in the light, it's so statement, but at the same time, it's just so classy, I think. Um, it's not too much at all, but it just adds the right amount of wow to any outfit that you're wearing that day. And I do like that the gold, obviously I wear mostly rose gold. Um, I have mostly rose gold earrings. I'm definitely trying to expand a little bit of my gold collection, but I don't think it's weird at all to mix like gold and rose gold metals if you do it well. Um, so I had no problem getting the gold guilloche necklace, even though there's no rose gold, um, didn't hesitate at all because this is such a stunning necklace. So the price on the guilloche, definitely um, a much more expensive necklace. The pre-tax amount was $3,700 and then post-tax it was $4,000.19. It was $4,019.13. So definitely these all gold pieces are more expensive than if you bought like a vintage size necklace in a different stone or the pearl. So um, even like my sweet necklace, the um, classic rose gold, or sorry, the classic gold with the white mother of pearl necklace is cheaper than the rose gold hammer necklace. And of course, you know, vintage classic 
white mother of pearl necklace will be cheaper than the all gold guilloche necklace. Um, but another thing to consider is that white gold is also usually typically more expensive than the gold pieces. So this one retails for 3,700 pre-tax, but the white gold version of this, I believe does retail for 4,000. So just something to keep in mind when you're shopping around. But again, I do definitely believe that the um, sweet necklace that I just showed you is a great first piece to your collection. And then as you move on, adding a vintage piece to your collection would be next on my list. Obviously these days VCA is becoming a lot more popular. Um, so everybody and their mother has like the classic gold and white mother of pearl vintage necklace. So I think it is nice to sometimes get pieces that are a little less common. Of course, I think at this point, like all Van Cleef pieces are very, very popular, but definitely the Kiyoshi is a little less seen than the classic Mother of Pearl. So um, if you do like uh, that kind of thing where you don't want pieces that literally everybody else has, then definitely considering the all gold pieces, whether it be the hammered or the Kiyoshi, could definitely be something that you want to be on the lookout for. Okay, and the last large items um, from my birthday haul are all from Chanel. So uh, I guess I'll start with the smaller one and move to the bigger box. This one is something that I bought for myself. Any guesses on what it is based on the size of the box? Uh, please leave in the comments below, but let's just get to opening it. Now I'm sure that you may know what this is, um, but it is one of their wallet on chains <laughs> from their 23S collection. This is so, so, so beautiful. Um, let me just pull the chain out. So the coloring, let me double check um, what the coloring was. Um, yes, yeah, so the color just says light pink. So I guess that's just what it is, light pink. Um, not sure if there's a different name for the color, but it has champagne gold hardware, as well as this larger CC on the front. So this is actually my first wallet on chain that I do own from Chanel. Um, for a while, I thought that they were a little oversaturated. Obviously, um, a lot of people like when they buy Chanel and their, their first piece is typically a wallet on chain because it's at a little bit of a more affordable price point. Um, usually they go for the black, I think. But um, what I did see, I felt like the CC on the wallet on chain was just like a little small because the classic CC um, just fits into one of these little diamonds. Um, and I felt like it was just a little, I don't know, like the proportions were off on the bag or something like that. So when I did see this bag um, with a bit of a larger CC, I thought that uh, definitely the proportions looked a little bit more right to me. And the coloring on this pink was like so adorable. Inside is just how every single wallet on chain looks, but it's just got, I guess, six pockets, four cards. It has a zip in the front as well as a front and a back pocket. I've been getting a lot of wear out of this. It's definitely pretty large when you kind of fill it to the maximum amount it can be filled. Um, it definitely fits all the essentials. And for a spring bag, this pink really cannot be beat, I think. Um, I did want to share two accessories that I often use with the wallet on chain. So the first accessory is actually a type of shaper that you can use in a wallet on chain. So it comes in this little velvet holder but it's simply a leather kind of strip that you put into the bottom of your bag. So it's got this little nifty tab. So you want to put the tab facing upward so you can easily pull it out of the bag once you're not using it anymore. But all you do is you push it to the very bottom of your wallet on chain. And that helps just keep its shape from collapsing in and folding on the sides. And it fits perfectly and does like a really, really good job of just keeping the bottom in shape and then also just helping me create space for all the items that I'd like to put into the bag. Um, I'll include the link for this down below, but um, there's other shapers that kind of come in like a little box form, but I think that um, I'm not particularly worried about getting any kind of markings or stains on the inside of the bag. So um, this is more than enough to just help me keep the shape of the bag. So we'll include the link down below. 
And lastly, I did want to include this because I actually don't think a lot of people are aware that this actually exists. But this is a um, chain shortener and this is given to me directly from Chanel. So I have a couple of these. Um, typically, I do believe that they only really give them out if you're buying a wallet on chain, but my essay was kind enough to give them to me when I asked for them for other bags as well. But let me just pop it out. So this is what a chain shortener looks like. It's essentially just like two little kind of half circles connected to this kind of large center part. And what you do is you flip down the center part, creating an open space, and you can actually use it to link two sides of the chain together. So you can see that I've linked two sides of the chain together, and then you simply need to flip this middle part down. And now that the chain is completely hooked together. So this works as a chain shortener because then you can go in and tuck the strap into the bag. and it will keep that chain at that length that you made it. So now when you carry your wallet on chain, it now becomes a super cute shoulder bag with all the fuss of all this additional, oh, that's a little, with all the fuss of an additional like looping around your strap and hoping that when you open the bag, your strap will come undone and everything. So it's really, really convenient to have this. And this strap shortener can be used on any chain bag that you have. So it's really nice to ask for a couple of these to have on hand. And then you can use them for any bag that you want. So again, I don't think that a lot of people are aware that Chanel actually just like gives these out for free. Um, I have seen a lot of people buy them on Amazon and I do believe that the Chanel quality is quite nice and it's very small and compact. So definitely if you're in the market for a wallet on chain, make sure to ask your essay for a chain shortener as well. I did want to just mod this bag for you guys as well, just so you can kind of see the chain lengths and how you can wear the bag. So I am 5'7", so uh, not doing anything to the chain definitely sits kind of low, and I think um, I would never really wear the bag this low because it does kind of hit like below my hip and it feels a little bit awkward. So I think the first uh, step that a lot of people do will just be to wrap the chain once on each side. And this definitely creates a bit more of a nice crossbody length to keep all your valuables close by. And it hits just right at my hip. And then I think that another way people usually will wear their bag is to do the loop through to create a double chain. And then this creates the perfect length for a little shoulder bag. But again, I think that without the chain shortener, you're kind of limited to like three chain lengths really. So having that shortener will allow you to be a lot more versatile with the bag. Even with like my mini bags using that uh, chain strap shortener, I'm able to create things like belt bags and all that stuff. So again, please don't forget to ask your essay for one of those cute little shorteners. And if you, even if you forget, I'm sure they can go back to the store and ask for one as well. And going over the price, um, so this one uh, was bought right after the price increase, which breaks my heart a little bit. And in addition, it's not the classic wallet on chain because it does have a larger CC detailing, which I guess warrants for a couple extra hundred dollars to be added onto the price. But pre-tax, it was um, $3,725. So post-tax, it was $4,046.28. So it is quite expensive, I think, for a wallet on chain. Um, additionally, I did just want to mention that I do like that this pink color did come in the caviar leather. Um, typically for lighter colored bags, I do prefer them in the caviar because there's a little less likelihood for color transfer. Something like this light pink, if it were in lambskin, I'm sure that I might ruin it the first day that I wear it. I do have like a white lambskin from Chanel that has definitely gotten color transfer on it from a couple wears. So um, anything light like this now, I will probably be searching it for in the caviar leather but so far I have worn it a couple times already um, it's very carefree just kind of toss it around obviously I make sure that I'm not wearing something super dark or if I am it's been washed several times but definitely the wallet on chain is a great first Chanel piece um, for anyone looking for a bag because it's definitely large enough to hold the essentials but it's also not too large too bulky and it's a great evening bag or a casual bag depending on how you wear the strap so the second to last piece I'll show you is actually a pair of shoes. Uh, 
Um, the shoes come with a dust bag for each shoe. And they are a pair of Chanel flats. They are so, so gorgeous. So um, this is probably the most classic Chanel colorway I think I've seen in like the flats or the heels or the slingbacks um, with this very pretty beige and then um, sometimes it's all beige or the black on the front. This season, this is from the 23S collection. It does have this little embroidery detail with the CCs on the beige side, which I thought was just really cute but neutral touch to add to them. And I was looking for a pair of flats to be able to wear in just a little bit more of a professional setting as well as I typically like to wear heels, but you know, your feet kind of get tired from wearing heels all the time. So I thought investing in a really nice pair of flats would definitely be a good idea. Um, the colorway for this, I believe is, let me just double check. So the colorway is just, it's just called beige and black. This is lambskin and patch and calfskin on the toe. And I got these in a size 38. So typically I am a size 37 and a half, but when I went into store, the 37 and a halfs were just a little too tight, I felt for me. So I did end up sizing up to the 28. And I did try a couple other of the Chanel um, shoes, such as like the boots the espadrilles, um, the slingbacks. Um, but what's very interesting is that you definitely have to go in store to try on the shoe size. I felt that for every style, my size in the Chanel shoe was a little bit different. I had to size up a little bit for the flats. In the slingbacks, I definitely still was a 37 and a half. Um, for the espadrilles, I felt like neither shoe size fit me. I think the estrogels did not come in the half sizes. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But I think I tried the 37 and I tried the 38, but like neither fit my sh foot very correctly. So definitely if you are considering buying a pair of Chanel shoes, please go in store and double check your size because it is a little different per style, I would say. So yeah, definitely these ones I did have to size half a shoe up, but maybe you're different. It definitely does depend, I think, on the width of your feet as well. I'm definitely not wide-footed, so these just were a half size up that I had to go in. Um, but I think that these are such a beautiful neutral shoe and a little touch of luxury to any outfit without being a little too loud. So um, I don't know. I think that the term like quiet luxury, there's like some controversy around that. Some people think it's dumb. Some people think it's you know, what everybody should be doing, but this is definitely a type of shoe that I do believe kind of fits that quiet luxury vibe. If you know, you know it's a Chanel shoe, but if you don't, it's just a very pretty beige um, flat that you're wearing. Okay, and my very last purchase is here. Can you guess from the packaging what it might be? This bag i had been wanting for a very 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 long time um but it's just it's hard to get so um i was extremely lucky to have met an essay that's like the most wonderful essay ever and he was really really helpful in helping me obtain this bag so it is in here and it is actually the classic mini flap in champagne gold hardware with black lambskin this was like my dream bag for quite some time. The minis in the black colorway are typically hard to get because um, they're just not made that much and obviously there is some demand for them. So um, I was extremely lucky to be able to get this around my birthday time. And actually I do have to credit my boyfriend yeah, he knew it was like my dream bag and he jumped in and said, you know what, I let me get this free because I know you've been wanting it for so long. So thank you so much to my boyfriend. But I will just open it up and show you. I've actually already used this once, so it does have a chain strap shortener on it. But here it is. So obviously it's just kind of a mini version of the small and medium. It does not have the double flap in it. 
um, or does it have like the double uh, holes for uh, the double chain look but if I open it up inside there's not much anything it's just blank space and it does have a little black pocket and then on the back it does have the back pocket and currently I have it set up so it's just a very nice shoulder bag that's where it hits and this bag is just so wonderful because it can be worn to literally any occasion. I think it can be both casual and uh, elevated as well. But getting this bag actually was like a bit of a journey, I would say, if anything. So I told my essay that I really wanted this bag. Um, and if you could please be on the lookout for it if any anything came. And this was right around the time when um, the 23S collection was being launched. Um, and I know that a couple of these um, usually are launched with every new season collection. So I was hoping and praying that he would be able to secure this bag for me. And he did text me and say that there were two coming and that he could reserve one for me. And I was so over the moon. But the day before I was supposed to go in, which was the day that the 23S collection was launched, he actually texted me and said um, he opened the bag just to uh, inspect it and make sure there was nothing wrong with it. But it actually came with a scratch. So he said that he had to send it back, um, but he would definitely let me know when the next mini was coming in and he already talked to his manager about it. And so it was guaranteed that the next mini that would come in would be reserved for me so I was like okay it's a little disappointing because I was like, really excited to go in the next day look at the new collection and then pick up this bag but I was like it's fine you know I'd much prefer having a flawless bag so no issues there I think maybe a week or a week and a half later he texted me saying like okay we have the next one feel free to come in anytime so I was like okay great this is it so I go in and I see the bag. This is my first time actually looking at the mini um, black in person. I had like literally never seen one in store any, any other time that I had gone in. So I saw it, it was absolutely perfect. I purchased it and then I go home and um, I let it sit for a couple of days, but then I opened it up and I was planning on spraying down the lambskin with um, like a protectant that I use. So I had opened up the box, gotten the bag out, and when I opened it to kind of like prepare it uh, and like lay it flat for uh, the spraying, the CC turn lock actually just like fell off. Um, I was so shook. I can like include a photo of it on the screen, but um, I was like, oh my God, like how can this happen? And of course, um, I think there's been a lot of talk about like Chanel quality decreasing and some people are just having various issues with their bags. So I was like, oh my gosh, is this just a fluke or is this kind of in line with the quality issues that I've been hearing? But I texted my essay. He was like, oh my God, we need to return this right now. So I was like, okay, yes, let's return it. So I bring it back, return the bag. They said they'll just send it back. And again, the next mini would definitely be mine. Um, so I was like, okay, that's like, I don't know when that's gonna be. Um, but luckily, I think maybe two weeks later, um, I got another text saying, okay, we have another mini. And actually what my essay explained was that he explained the situation to the manager and they felt a little sorry that I had gone through kind of two minis and both of them had some kind of defect on them. So they actually asked um, like corporate to special send them another mini just so I could have it before the next season launch or typically when they would receive another mini, which might've been a long time after that. So I was like, oh my gosh, thank you. Um, I really appreciate that you uh, looked at my situation and explained to corporate what happened and they were able to send another bag. So I go in, super high hopes, super like, you know, a ton of expectations. Finally, this is, this mini is going to be mine. Um, I go in and I look at the bag and it just was like off to me. When I first looked at it, it kind of almost looked like someone had already used the bag almost. Uh, I have no idea if that's actually true or not, but when I looked at the bag, there was already creasing like on the back side here. So if someone had obviously opened and closed the flap a couple times, um, the back stitching was like uneven such that the it looked like the pocket on the back wasn't actually in the middle of the bag. I think it was pretty close, but I think basically what, what, what had happened was the quilting stitching on the back was actually like slightly skewed to one side, which made like the back pocket look like it was not in the center of the bag. Um, and just like a couple of other things, the sticker on the hardware looked a little weird. I don't know, like paying such a large amount of money for the bag, you obviously want the bag to be perfect. And so I was inspecting the bag. I was really trying to like it, telling myself it's not worth, I mean, telling myself it's fine. You're going to use the bag, obviously where it's going to come to it. But then I, I just eventually told my essay, I'm sorry, just the bag is like not speaking to me. Can I please um, just get the next mini that comes in? 
And I felt really bad for saying this because um, this bag was shipped specially for me. And of course, I think they all, everybody expected that the bag to, um, like I would take the bag since I had been waiting for a long time for it. But I don't know, just something fell off. And I think that for a luxury brand, you're paying a lot of money, you should feel really good about your purchase. And so I know that a lot of other girls would definitely be um, very excited to receive this bag. And maybe there's some in that pool that wouldn't mind as much as as I would. So obviously there's no problem for them like trying to sell the bag to any other customers. So even though I did feel bad, I said, um, please let me just get the next mini. And my essay was very nice about it. He said, yes, no problem. Of course, you know, um, let me ask my other clients if they're interested in the bag, but definitely I will let you know when the next mini comes. So um, after that happened, I was just a little feeling nervous, I guess, because I felt like, oh, maybe they think I'm so picky that when the next mini comes in, they might think that I'll reject it again. So maybe they'll offer it to another client first or something like that. Um, but thankfully that was not the case. As soon as the next mini came in, which was maybe two weeks later after that, um, my essay did call me back and said, I have the perfect mini. I really think that you'll like this one. So I go in, it, it is this one. I check it out. Everything looks perfect. It calls my name. It sings to me, whatever. Um, so I did end up purchasing this one, bringing it home. And I'm very, very, very happy with my purchase. I was lucky that this bag particularly had pretty good puffiness. Um, I think it's like very even. All the stitching looks good. I like laser inspected this bag after all the issues I had been having previously, but I can say with confidence that everything looks wonderful with this bag. So um, again, like I mentioned before, when I was talking with my wallet on chain, it does have the chain shortener in here. So any, any Chanel bag that has a chain, any bag really doesn't have to be Chanel that has a chain, you can use the shortener with it. And I particularly like using that method to create shoulder bags because I think that it can look a little messy when you're looping your chain such that it creates like two different chains. So I prefer using the shortener just to shorten the chain strap so that it can become like a shoulder bag. So I can actually do that now just to show that for demonstration purposes, but super easy. Just unhook it from whatever position you had it in the first place. And then you just kind of, you know, decide, okay, this is a pretty good length for a shoulder bag re-clip in your chain shortener, close the bag, and now you have a wonderful little shoulder bag. That pretty much draws my this year's birthday haul to a close. Um, I really hope that you enjoy watching. If you have any questions about any of the items that I showed, please just leave them down in the comments. But that's a wrap for today's video, and I will definitely see you in the next one. Bye!